All right, it's about that time. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is Arun Thuraviam, and I'm a simulation product manager with Go Engineer. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this webinar on 3D Experience Simulia, uh, where we'll looking, where we'll be, we'll be looking at some simulation tools and where it's been applied to the life sciences. Uh, today, I have with me uh, Ramesh Lakshmipati, who's the senior technical manager at Dassault Systems. Uh, hi, Ramesh. How are you doing today? Good, Arun. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Ramesh was one of the people who helped me put this presentation together, and he's, he's, I guess, a very important technical resource in the SOLIDWORKS world and the simulation world, so he'll be helping us understand this portfolio better through your questions and answers. Um, I also have, uh, we, we also could have had Dr. Omar Zoni. He's another senior technical manager uh, uh, unfortunately, at Dassault System. He couldn't make it today for the presentation, but he helped me uh, put, to the, put this presentation together. So many thanks to him as well. All right, let's kick this off. I have a very straightforward agenda for you today. Uh, we'll talk about some of the challenges that are in the life sciences industry identified by Dassault Systems. Uh, we look at 3D Experience Simulia portfolio and the simulation tools it has. I'll give you a brief product demonstration on some of the simulation tools used to tackle some problems in the life sciences. And then we'll take a look at that, how that industry has adopted these tools to uh, better their products and essentially develop their products. Um, and finally, we'll wrap up the presentation with some future targets for this technology for our SOLIDWORKS channel. All right, as far as the life sciences is concerned, Dassault Systems has essentially divided them into three groups uh, when, uh, when you take product development. So there's medical devices, there's pharmaceuticals, and patient care. And th they have applications that range from developing stents to pacemakers, all the way to uh, manufacturing drugs and packaging, um, and also uh, drug delivery situations when it comes to patient care. Uh, one common aspect of all these uh, sectors and their product development efforts is that developing devices and delivering them to market is a very expensive and time-consuming process. Uh, this group has estimated that uh, they essentially have an ex expenditure of over $100 billion as of 2020, and this contributes to about 22% of the R&D costs when you take all the major industries, uh, such as automotive and uh, aerospace and so on and so forth. Um, another challenge in the life sciences product development is, uh, is that uh, they have a large patient population to cater to that leads to uh, various device variations. So, you know, they can't develop a device that's uh, one size fits all. Uh, they'll need to dev uh, develop devices that have some variation in them, and they need to validate all of these variations as well. Um, so let's kind of uh, uh, unpack what the product development workflow looks like in the life sciences industry. It always starts with the design, and then they have a very extensive testing process. So this testing involves some preliminary uh, virtual testing and bench testing, but typically they spend a lot of time in physiological testing where they take the actual device and test it with animals and cadavers and a combination thereof. Um, and uh, before the first test, is done with this device in a realistic human environment. It takes a it takes a couple of years, and more often than not, these devices, when they enter the human environment, they aren't typically the most mature design. So they'll need to iterate th through this entire process that could take anywhere between five to twenty years to develop a, a, a mature and completed uh, device. Again. This entire process is compounded by the variations required for the patient population that they'll be targeting. So, you know, and this, this further increases the time, effort, and cost involved in developing their designs. Now, through design simulation, what they've done is they've essentially shortened this design life cycle by performing a lot of this iterative uh, testing uh, through in silico process. So in silico meaning they develop virtual bench tests where they uh, have uh, CAD models or uh, scan models of the devices, and they're able to run analysis on them. And the advantage of these in silico tests is that they're able to replicate human environments as well, such as organs, you know, hearts, lungs, uh, and the various organs that these devices are implanted into, to be able to come with a holistic, uh, come up with a holistic testing environment just in the virtual space. Uh, this uh, this enables them to essentially uh, design device variations and also patient uh, patient variations in a virtual environment before they actually deliver the first prototype for physical testing. So you know the first time 
their device is tested in a in a virtual human environment is much sooner than the previous development process that I sh showcased. So this drastically shortens the the time taken to develop these devices and also the costs involved before they get into clinical testing. And even during the clinical testing phase, they are typically done in conjunction with in silico testing to correlate existing devices and also to develop variation based on the in silico results. Um, the advantage of this process is that these companies can utilize these simulation results or have started utilizing these results as evidences for uh, regulatory bodies like the FDA as well. Um, so that further uh, shortens the development life cycle for getting these devices from design to market. Now, where does 3D Experience Simulia come in? 3D Experience Simulia or Simulia is a is the uh, simulation suite from Dassault Systems. Uh, they've been involved in the life sciences in developing in in helping with some of these challenges and also developing their own technology to meet these challenges. Um, so they offer a multidisciplinary simulation suite that range from finite element analysis to computational fluid dynamics all the way to electromagnetic analysis. For today's presentation, we'll be focusing on the finite element analysis role called the structural mechanics engineer role and the CFT software called the fluid dynamics engineer role on the 3D experience platform. Uh, so what is the 3D experience platform? Well, it's essentially a platform of apps that enables users to design and develop products in a collaborative environment. Um, and what this means for SOLIDWORKS users is that it gives them a gateway to access some of these advanced analysis tools to run these kind of sophisticated simulation. Um, the benefit to SOLIDWORKS users is not only that they have an environment where they can collaborate and share their designs, um, but uh, it also offers scalable computing in terms of expanding local computing resources for complex analysis. So you can use their cloud computing uh, resources in order to run analysis really quickly through the 3D Experience platform. Now, to showcase the technology, we've set up about two case studies. Uh, one is a CFD of a heart valve, and another one is a structural analysis of uh, a stent deployment. So we'll start off with the CFD analysis of the heart valve. Um, the, this heart valve uh, test apparatus, is, uh, it's a pretty simple device, but it has a very big effect on, the, uh, on justifying the efficacy of the heart valve design. And the primary goal would be to determine the pressure and flow characteristics of blood through the heart valve. Uh, and what we'll be looking at is we'll be trying to avoid turbulence uh, and excessive back pressure. So excessive turbulence essentially leads to killing you know, blood cells and platelets, which isn't, which isn't great. And, uh, and excessive back pressure or excessive pressure required to push the blood through the heart valve would only mean that you know, the heart has to put in that much more effort to essentially uh, uh, transport the blood across it. Um, so in order to tackle these challenges, we, we've used the fluid dynamics engineer role, which is the CFD role on the 3D experience platform. So let's take a look. Here's just a section view of the heart valve so that I can show you the position of the leaflets. Uh, in the heart valve apparatus, um, and this is the simulation environment on the 3D experience platform. So you'll notice some commonalities with the simulation environment or some, uh, some features. One is the assistant panel right here, which acts as a simulation wizard. So with the assistant panel, you're able to monitor your analysis uh, process and ensure that you have all the inputs uh, uh, required to set up the CFD analysis. And you have this feature tree right here that also facilitates uh, you to keep track of the various inputs and boundary conditions and the mesh that you uh, essentially set up in this analysis. I'll start off by showing you how the software recognizes the fluid domain, which is one of the benefits of using this program. You're able to essentially indicate various inlets and outlets and the parts that will be utilized in the analysis. So the software takes advantage of these inputs to automatically recognize the fluid domain. Next, I'll turn on the mesh to show you uh, the hex dominant meshing feature. So primarily the software uses a combination of the hex mesh and the tet mesh and the prism prismatic elements to be able to capture both boundary layers and the internals of the fluid volume pretty accurately. And besides that, the automated hex mesher has uh, local refinement capabilities that's able to capture critical areas like these leaflets or the boundaries of these leaflets. Um, the automated hex mesher also has an input where you can specify the thickness of the boundary layer and the number of elements you would like to apply across it. Next, I can use the uh, boundary condition inputs to set up the flow rates and the pressure. Here I have an inlet flow rate of around 25 inch cube per second, which is the average flow rate of blood through this heart valve. Um, 
after that uh, i'd like to showcase some of the uh, material properties um, so um, so under the modeling tab i have the material properties and uh, I'd like to show you the material models that are available here. We use the non-Newtonian material model, but you can imagine that the material database has various incompressible, compressible, Newtonian, non-Newtonian fluid models that can be used to characterize uh, the behavior of various fluids. Here specifically, we use the power, power law model for uh, to characterize the blood flow. Now, I've done this analysis already, so let's take a look at some of the results. Here, you're looking at a velocity plot, but what's more important is I'd like to look at the pressure plot see that the pressure pressure drop across the heart valve is negligible indicating that you know the heart doesn't have to put in too much effort to push uh, blood across this valve uh, the next thing is the gauge pressure plot that gives me an idea about uh, localized pressures at different area different sections in the model and then finally you can take a look at the velocity vector plots to uh, to dictate uh, any turbulence in the model um, you can either plot these as contours or you can vectorize them as I've shown you on the screen and speaking of vectors I actually have the ability to turn on three-dimensional flow trajectory plots that are very similar to what you're accustomed to on the flow simulation desktop solution so this is a very good qualitative uh, uh, qualitative estimate of the uh, of how laminar the flow is through the volume and if, where the areas of stagnation and turbulence are Besides that, if you notice, on top of this little panel, I have three tabs. And these three tabs are essentially the same analysis run for three different configurations of the design. And I can quickly turn on these kind of comparison plots to show you a compare and contrast between uh, these two design variations. So you can see that the, the, in the operational mode, when the leaflets are open, um, you have a lower gauge pressure. And when, when the leaflets are partially open, you have a higher gauge pressure, indicating that it's, it's non-operational. Now, I'd like to show you on the next slide how I was able to drive the design change. I can drive this design change directly from SOLIDWORKS, which is the biggest benefit of using this 3D experience technology. So here, I have the uh, heart valve design in SOLIDWORKS. And what I'm about to do is I'm going to modify the mates of the leaflets. So I reposition their angle. Um, once I've modified both these mates, what I'll be able to do is I can use the 3D experience connector to essentially push these design changes onto the simulation environment. So there it is, I have the connector, I'm about to um, save uh, the modified design, and when I save the modified design, I'm able to increase the version or the revision number, so that way um, I'm able to set up a, I'm, or I'm able to maintain a history of all the designs I've gone through and also their respective simulation results. Now back in the 3D experience platform in the simulation environment, I'm able to replace the existing model by the new revision. So that way the simulation model updates with the new leaflet configuration. Now once that's done, I'll show you a little cut plot. You'll notice that the, while the model's updated, the mesh hasn't. So in order to update the mesh, all I need to do is hit the update button and the software essentially applies the automated mesh settings and the local refinement around the leaflets to remesh the model with the new configuration. Once the model is refreshed, uh, I, can, I can directly run the analysis because all the boundary conditions will be automatically mapped. And after the analysis is run, I'll have the simulation results for the new configuration. So this way, I can use the platform and the, and the SOLIDWORKS connector and SOLIDWORKS to generate multiple versions of the same design and essentially study their, uh, study their efficacy. All right, so let's summarize this. So in this little heart valve example, I, besides showcasing uh, some uh, attributes related to its performance, the big takeaway is that uh, uh, the Fluid Dynamics Engineer enables you, uh, gives you ease of use in terms of automatic fluid recognition during the analysis setup process. You're able to capture really complex geometry using the body-fitted hex meshing algorithm. Uh, right out of the box, uh, this also gives you about eight embedded processing cores on your local machines to be able to run these analyses very quickly. And you can take advantage of the SOLIDWORKS connector to update your designs. Um, and I thought I'd just showcase the differences between um, a couple of hot valve configurations where in one configuration it's in the operational mode and the other configuration it's in the non-operational mode that demonstrate it's a much higher uh, gauge pressure as expected. All right, for the next example, as it's, a, it's a very popular case study in the life sciences field, which is the 
coronary angioplasty you're essentially simulating the deployment of a stent in an artery and we'll be taking advantage of the structural mechanics engineer role which is the abacus solver on the 3d experience platform so this basically involves three steps you 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 deploy the catheter in the in the in the area of the uh, in the area of the artery that requires the stent deployment you expand the balloon that expands the stent and then the stent essentially crimps onto the artery wall and you'd like to see the stress distribution of the stent and just evaluate the efficacy of this entire process and a, a sophisticated structural solver such as this is is exactly what you need to execute this without any issues all right again back to the simulation environment the first thing you'll notice is that the structural analysis environment is very similar to the cft environment Ma matter of fact they're one and the same you'll just need to add the solver with respect to the physics you'd like to solve now here i i have I have this entire process as a four-part assembly, and uh, what you saw on the outside was the artery. Uh, what you see on the inside here is the balloon and the um, and the stent itself. Now you can imagine there are various materials that goes to characterizing each of these things. So I'll jump to the material editor to show you some of these material properties in the uh, in the library. So we actually have access to the super elastic material that enables you to capture the entire stress strain curve of the nitinol material property. So that involves both the the elastic modulus in the martensite phase and the uh, the the stresses involved during the uh, tensile loading, tensile uh, unloading, and compressive loading process. For the artery, we use the hyperelastic material. We have about nine different hyperelastic materials available, and we use the neo hokian model. And finally, to capture the plastic deformation of all the metallic components, we have metal plasticity models that we captured using a isotropic stress strain curve. Uh, and all you need to do is put in the yield stress and the strains that your component, components undergo beyond the yield point. Now jumping back to the simulation environment, I'd like to walk you through a little bit of the setup. Um, uh, although this is a multi-step simulation process, what we did was we essentially were able to run this analysis in just one step. And how we managed to do that is while setting up the time steps, we essentially ran this analysis for a five second period uh, at 0.1 second increments. And during this five second periods, we essentially set up amplitudes uh, uh, or amplitude tables that essentially governs each of these inputs. So there is a uh, amplitude that governs when the pressurization of the balloon kicks in, which is at around two seconds of the analysis. Um, there's another amplitude plot that governs when the stent is crimped, which, uh, which is what the analysis begins with. And finally, there's an expansion step that also kicks in at around two seconds when the stent is, uh, when, the, when the balloon is being pressurized. Um, so besides these amplitude steps, you might be wondering how we are able to capture the multiple contact faces. So we essentially use the proprietary general contact algorithm to be able to capture all the points of contact that the software, that the components undergo during the simulation process without any user intervention. Next, as far as the restraints go, we have two restraints, one where we're fixing the artery edge and another where we, pin, we pinned a node on the stent to stabilize the stent. And finally, you can see under the loads tree that we have the crimping expansion and the pressuri pressurization applied through both displacements and, uh, and input pressure. One thing you'll notice here is the quality of the mesh. So we have a pretty sophisticated measure, uh, an automated sweep measure that's able to apply hexahedral elements to really complicated geometry. Um, and, uh, you, uh, and, the, and obviously the benefit of the hex mesh for a process like this is that it's able to run the analysis really quickly. And at the same time, it's able to give you high quality results for these large deformation type analysis. So for a really complicated analysis like this, it is recommended that you try and utilize a uh, full full hexahedral mesh or a combination of hexahedral and a quad mesh to be able to execute the entire analysis. Finally, let's take a look at some of the results. I'm going to fast forward this video directly to the results so that I can show you the entire process in action. Um, here we, we're starting off with the balloon expansion where the stent has been crimped and the balloon is essentially expanding the stent towards the artery and as soon as it makes contact with the artery the balloon is then depressurized and the stent remains crimped onto the artery wall. Again, to summarize this entire process, here's another, here's another video of, 
the stent deployment here again you can see the crimping tool catching the stent uh, and then the balloon pressurizing the stent to catch the artery wall uh, a few key takeaways in technology involved in in running this analysis is that again it's a multi-step structural analysis uh, that was captured in just one step uh, we have really sophisticated material models to accurately capture the uh, the, the behavior of each of these materials and to get an accurate representation of the stress distribution. Um, the automated general contact capability enables us or enables the software to automatically capture uh, any kind of contact pair that during the simulation process without any user intervention so you don't have to go and select each of these faces and essentially indicate to the software that hey you know these faces might come into contact at some time in the analysis. So especially when you have complicated non uh, in orthogonal geometry this becomes a, real, a really big benefit in terms of setting up the analysis and the final thing is the hexahedral mesh i don't have to explain the hexahedral mesh to this audience you guys realize the importance of the hexahedral mesh in terms of giving you high quality results and for you to be able to tackle tackle large deformations with accuracy and speed um, that concludes the product demonstration i'll go into a couple of examples where this technology has been adopted in industry uh, I'll start off with this with this company called Novo Nordisk. Uh, they're a company out in Denmark that essentially designs insulin pens. Uh, they use the abacus solver to be able to uh, study the plastic materials they require in order to manufacture their insulin pens. And they had some rigorous characteristics that they needed to achieve in terms of deciding the plastic material. The first thing is they needed to sim they needed to be able to simulate the snap fit in different uh, thermal environments so you know we need a temperature dependent data they also wanted to capture the viscous behavior of the plastic during the simulation process um, which we were able to program in as a material property and finally creep simulation is a big aspect of a lot of these product developments so with creep you're not only able to tell the you're, you're essentially able to tell the shelf life of these products when they're in their stress states for an extended period of time um, through this process Besides executing the snap fit, you can see the stress distribution during the snap process and also the force required to execute the snap. So all of this uh, technology available with the Abacus Solver essentially enabled them to confidently come up with the material that uh, they essentially designed their insulin pens with. The next example is out here in Wisconsin. The GE Healthcare Division out in Wisconsin essentially designs ventilators, vaporizers, and gas delivery equipment. And they use the SOLIDWORKS simulation suite pretty extensively for a lot of their product development. Here, you can see that they used, for one of their sealing applications, they use SOLIDWORKS simulation to validate a O-ring. Um, so they, study, they started off with SOLIDWORKS simulation to study a 2D axisymmetric version. And then with the Simulia tool, they essentially ran the three-dimensional analysis of this uh, assembly process to ensure the sealability of their ventilator of their ventilator device uh, for a specific O-ring design. Again, there are a lot of technology. Uh, there are a lot of aspects of the technology that contributed to running this analysis very effectively, uh, and one of which being the nonlinear hyperelastic material models that's available with the Simulia solver that uh, can capture the behavior of the O-ring pretty accurately. Again, because the O-ring goes through drastic shape deforma deformations and uh, the and as the area of contact changes during the assembly process the generalized contact kind of helps manage that accurately so they decided they required two different success criteria to to essentially validate a design one of it they it was to study a the contact pressure which they could using the contact pressure visualization tools and the next is by deriving the force required to complete this assembly uh, so that uh, so that this assembly forms the, uh, the forms the seal and is also you know does it doesn't take too much of an effort to assemble. So we have a rec uh, or they have essentially uploaded a video of their entire ventilator design process and on the SolidWorks channel and I list this uh, video in the description. So if you'd like to see another example or other examples of how the si simulation tools available in SOLIDWORKS and Simulia are being used by G Healthcare. You know, you should go check that out. Here are some other examples where the simulation tools being, the Simulia tools are being used in industry. Here again, uh, uh, this is an example of a drug delivery and diffusion process. The goal here was to determine an optimum drug delivery location um, and also the dosage and infusion rate required. 
um, ultimately they'd like to understand the drug transport into the areas they'd like to drug to to travel to the role that was used to essentially run this analysis was the fluid dynamics engineer role that i uh, demonstrated earlier uh, besides the abil ability to characterize non newtonian flows um, we could uh, they could essentially run a transit analysis in a situation like this um, and uh, and another another aspect of this analysis that was very important is that is the ability of the software to do both active and passive multi species flow so when you take active multi species flow you're essentially simulating flow mixing so you have a primary fluid and a secondary fluid that essentially interact with each other in this case being the drug and and blood uh, they also have a passive multi species flow where the motion of the secondary fluid is completely dictated by the primary fluid so a lot of this technology Uh, in addition to being able to capture complex geometry with the hex meshing uh, essentially contributed to being able to simulate this uh, this this kind of complex process the next thing uh, 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 the next example is a case that i guess most of us are familiar with which is drop testing devices uh, we use the simulator technology to essentially determine uh, uh, or 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 run uh, uh, simulate an actual drop test and also test test the functionality of these products after drop um specifically what was utilized in order to run these examples was or run these run these products was the explicit solver with abacus and again uh, the nonlinear material properties coupled with the damage modeling essentially helps us study product behavior in these high impact environments finally manufacturing manufacturing is uh, is one of those areas that actually uses uh simulation pretty ex extensively but it's not spoken about because it doesn't seem very obvious some of the challenges with manufacturing is the multi step nature and a lot of these manufacturing processes involve real complex materials and thermal analysis um so for instance when you take a blister pack thermoforming process you know there is a uh, there is a thermal aspect that where the film is heated and then there is uh, before the dye is essentially dropped onto the film to create the final shape of the blister pack Um, another interesting process that's used by the pharmaceutical industries is uh, is powder compaction uh, for manufacturing tablets uh, here specifically they use the drucker prager model to characterize the powder like nature of the uh, of the tablet and essentially simulate the compaction process by uh, using the structural analysis tools available in simulia finally here are some other examples of where this technology is utilized in life sciences i'll just leave it on here so if you guys would like to take a screenshot and you know research those examples yourselves you can but just know that the simulation process is ubiquitous ubiquitous in terms of where it's being utilized in uh, the human physiology to ensure that the various devices function as they should finally i'd like to wrap up this presentation by talking about some future work uh, so uh, this technology is evolving you know it is is constantly evolving um, at least for sol the solidworks user channel so right now we are able to simulate the structural physics and uh, fluid dynamics but eventually you'll be able to couple those physics to run a coupled uh, fluid structure interaction analysis that will help you run analyses like these so in the upcoming uh, you'll have to stay tuned for the upcoming releases to get access to this technology another example on that in that vein is uh, is a peristaltic pump again this is another multi physics example that marries structural analysis and fluid analysis essentially initially run the structural analysis where you simulate the compression of the tubing and then you run the fluid dynamic analysis where you see the amount of flow rate generated due to this compression finally i'd be remiss if i didn't speak about the living heart project this is one of the flagship uh, projects in the life sciences by simulia which is the simulation of an actual beating heart uh, this is a truly multidisciplinary simulation uh, where uh, which combines um, structural physics flow physics and electromagnetics to be able to uh, simulate a beating heart again there's a lot of details or data on the internet about the living heart project especially on the dasso systems website so please be sure to check that out and if you have any questions regarding this please don't hesitate to write to us Now let's talk about just the simulation portfolio that is available to SolidWorks users. So I'm pretty sure 
everyone on this call is familiar with the SOLIDWORKS simulation portfolio on desktop. So with SOLIDWORKS CAD, you get some uh, CAD integrated simulation tools for structural analysis with SOLIDWORKS simulation, for computational fluid dynamics with flow simulation, and injection molding analysis with plastics. But through the 3D experience platform, you can essentially expand the simulation portfolio with the structural engineer roles that gives you the abacus solver for structural analysis, the fluid dynamics engineer that gives you uh, uh, that gives you CFD capabilities on the 3D experience platform, and finally, plastics engineer, injection engineer that is identical to the injection molding uh, simulation on desktop, but it gives you access to cloud computing capabilities. And this is this is sort of an exploded view of the entire structures portfolio in the 3D experience simulia tool. Uh, it's very similar to the SolidWorks simulation portfolio, but offers additional capabilities in terms of multi-step analyses cloud computing, general contact, and advanced materials to be able to really push your nonlinear analysis you know, beyond the limits that you're accustomed to. And that's it for the presentation. Um, if you guys would like to, if you guys would like to uh, further learn about this technology, please be sure to check out our YouTube ch channel. Um, that is our 3D Experience Tutorials YouTube channel. We are uploading content on there on a weekly basis that talks about uh, how you can use both CAD simulation and PLM technology on the 3D experience platform. Uh, if you'd like to learn about how Simulia is being used in other industries, check out the ifwe.3ds.com. And finally, if you have any questions about any of these tools, please don't hesitate to contact GoEngineer. Again, thanks so much, guys, for sticking around. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please write them out in the question and answer questions panel, and uh, Ramesh and I will be happy to address them.